Okay, here's our oil painting we just finished up. It was the Great Blue Heron, just a previous demo. But I got a little bit of an idea to combine this with a photo. And it would be almost kind of like the hyper-realistic icicle on the photo. That was a painting on the photo. But I wonder if we could import this into another photo. Now, I found a photo that might work pretty well, but it'll give us a challenge. And that would be the whole point of this demo. This one right here, I found in my many photos, it was some of the several trips I had uh, to uh, Chincoteague and Assateague uh, to photograph waterfowl and waders. And this one was just one of the many. Now, this one's kind of interesting in itself because it, it has direct sunlight, and it's slightly uh, behind the bird and to the right. So it's going to have a very specific lighting to it, where our bird here, it was a overcast uh, day that I photographed that bird that I used as a reference, so it has no direct lighting at all. But I wonder if we could take this bird and put it in this photo, and I would like to try and put it right here in this lower corner, just up against all this darkness, because if you look, this water here that's kind of murky, it's very close to the background we already have. So it wouldn't be too much out of the ordinary there. Now, if we take this out, let me close this out because this is the photo we will use. We're going to take this bird out and put it on top of this photo just to see if we can match them up. But then what I could do is if I turn off my actual background, it is then just the painted bird all perfectly cut out, ready to go, since I painted all the edges on their own layers separate from the background. So by doing that, it gives me the chance to save it as a PSD and import it into that photograph and just with a perfect outline. But now what we could do is we will turn the background back on, and then what I'm going to do is grab everything all the way up to the signature, because I'll even leave the signature separate. And then we're going to merge all of these right here. So we're going to take this into Affinity Photo. And then what I will do is save this as a PSD. And we're going to leave this original file, and we're going to go to the new one. And then we will put it right up in here into the reference. And we're going to save it as a PSD and we'll just leave a great blue heron and we're saving that now okay then now we'll close this down open up affinity and what we could do is we'll open up our new photo which would be this right here this background here's the PSD we just saved and here's the photo I use in the reference uh, palette in Rebel 5. Now we're going to open this one up. This, this one is 5600 by 3733 at 300 uh, DPI. So this is going to be our canvas, so to speak. And then we will do a few steps here to help us manipulate this photo itself even uh, just a little bit, just to expand things out and do a few things. But what I'm going to do first is open up the other one and then we'll open this one up now this one will be opened up into a separate window and align it for the srgb which is fine and then now in affinity i'm going to uh now that i have this uh, psd selected what i can actually do is is select this layer this is the actual uh, bird itself because we merged all those painting layers together and now it's just its own layer if I turn off the background and then there's our background and then there's our canvas so we don't need the canvas we don't need the background for now we just want this one so what we will do is we will right click copy and then we will go back to our photograph and then we will actually right click paste and there's our bird now, if I grab my move tool here, I am going to move it down to the corner and just set it right there. And now we could go up and grab the background layer, which is just our photo. 
and I'm going to unlock it so I can resize it a little bit. I'd like to move this bird just a little wee bit more to the upper right. And just by resizing it, we could do that, but I don't think it's going to make that particular bird too big. Uh, I just want to watch the space between here, between this bird and this bird, and then just kind of judge uh, between uh, the perspective and also proportions as to how far this bird appears to look to be away and then also how how compared it is to the size of this bird and I think would be okay there so I'm going to just leave it right there and then also I want to bring out the shadow and the highlight just a little wee bit more contrast so what we'll do is we'll actually go up and actually select this right here and then we are going to select with our photo selected we're going to go up and then just add a new adjustment layer which is right here and then we're just going to go with contrast which is right there and one thing nice about this is it'll immediately add a mask so we could manipulate any part of this photo with the mask all we have to do is add black to a brush and then and paint on this mask and that will eliminate or slowly eliminate uh, our brightness so what we're going to do is we're going to put this up let's try about 20 percent to start with and that doesn't look too bad at all right there it's a little bit strong but we could change it uh, if it becomes too strong and then what we will do also is then just for showing you just mask to below and then that's it now this one we didn't have to worry about too much because the mask was right up above the background layer it wasn't above the drawing if it was above the drawing layer which is the illustration then it would have been affecting both of them now that is what's going to happen with these next ones now what I want to do now is since this illustration was on a cloudy day and it looks a little bit, even the whites are a little bit creamy, a little bit light gray, which, which was okay for that particular light situation. But we're going to make it look like it's in a light, bright, sunny day now. So I want to lighten it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is go back again and then hit layer and then another new adjustment layer. And this time I'm just going to hit levels just to brighten up the white a little bit which is right there and then I will actually go to the white level and raise it up and you'll see now it's changing the entire picture but when we just say mask to below that that's what will change that and I want to leave a little wee bit of detail in this white I just don't want it to go pure white uh, it doesn't look too bad right there but this will lighten it up some and we'll just do that but then what we will do is then right click on this again and say just mask to below right there and then now it's only affecting our illustration but we're going to do one more big adjustment to the illustration and that would be we're going to go up to layer and we're going to ask add one more filter here uh, adjustment layer right here and then we're going to go down to recolor and now it doesn't matter what color this is on and we're going to leave the saturation all the way up but we're going to take it all the way down to complete black but then what will change all of this is when we change the blending mode to average which is right here and then that's it now what that's going to do is what it's doing right now is it's 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 changing the entire picture it's almost looking like it's in shadows now including our photo but again, as soon as I right click and then just put mask to below, then now our, our photo is okay. It's just doing that particular mask to the illustration only. And that's what we want. So if I open this up, now it's going to show both of our masks, the recolor adjustment and the levels adjustment. But now if I click on any one of these, what I can actually do is also adjust the opacity as you could see then it's lightening and darkening it up so not only can you adjust it with a brush and and the black paint color but you could also adjust each layer 
as to whether or not you can adjust the opacity. Now you can see it's getting a little bit darker and lighter only because we lightened it up artificially with the levels. Uh, so once we start taking away this gray right here, then it will start exposing the brighter artificially lit uh, levels of our bird. Now what we have to do is try and match this sunlight here. The sunlight again is to the uh, right a little bit and then slightly behind uh, the bird. So we have to duplicate that exact same sunlight effect on this bird down here to make it look like this bird is standing on shore uh, and just preening with those feathers. I'll bring those feathers out uh, in the end and I might even go back in and work them up a little bit more just so they're nice and bright white up against that darker background. So let's do that next. Okay, we're just going to do this one in real time. What I will do is go up to the, the where it says acrylics. I'm going to go down to the masking brushes. And then I will just grab the soft one. And then this is where I will get started. And what I will do is grab the paintbrush. And now I have a... Uh, a smaller brush. I'm going to probably make it a little wee bit bigger. Uh, we're going to zoom in a little bit here first. About right there. And what I want to start doing is just start laying out where I think the sun is going to be on our illustration. Now you can see how it's, it's kind of skimming over the actual feathers where some of them are dark, some of them are light. And that is only because uh, it's a very uneven surface of what the sun is trying to cast on. So some of these white feathers here are in direct sunlight, but then they're now all the rest of the side of the bird is in shadow. Uh, so if I go down and take a look at this, what I want to be doing is on this one right here, and I want to be on the recolor layer, and if I start, you can see it's already turning white. What I want to do is take... A certain amount 100% off and then I'll go up here and change my opacity to way down so I could just take a little wee bit off at a time but what I'm gonna do right now is just kind of roughly draw in where I think the sunlight will be hitting on our illustration so if I start right in here and then I want the hardness to be down to zero Flow is okay. Opacity is okay. And we'll take this off completely. And then you could see on this one that the bill, I should say beak, is kind of actually uh, translucent. So if I take a little wee bit off of, well, we're going we're gonna to just do it a little bit at a time. We're going to undo that. And then we're going to wait on that. We'll go back to that in a little bit. And I can actually put some spots back in where the uh, nasal passage is. We're going to take all this off. And then we could actually now we'll go around here. And then we might go up around here. And then up through here. And then back around and we'll lighten all this up of where we know the sun might be hitting on the head and again I could change the opacity but I'd rather adjust it I don't want to change the opacity over the entire layer because then I may want some spots here right right in here where there's a shadow where it'd be real dark there might be reflected light over here and in here, depending on what's in front of the bird. If there's a lot of bright grass, like here, in front of the bird that's not even in the picture, then it might be uh, reflecting a lot of light back up into the bird from the direct sun. So the shadows will probably be the strongest right at their edge, and then some of this might be filled in with reflected light. Now what I want to do is take this down now, 28 and then we're going to make it bigger so we could actually 
work right there and then now I'm going to get rid of that edge just to start with on some of the feathers and on the beak we'll leave it fairly sharp but then I'm going to go back in and draw where I think some shadows might be in some of this and that's what will make it look like it's soft feathers in direct sun and then again we want to maybe if this is the sunlight coming down across here this might be a shadow right in here but then I will actually take it back down right there and then we'll go back up to 100% just to draw out our outline and then we're going to put a little bit of a shadow we'll just try it because keep in mind right now I'm using black on the white mask you can see how the mask is changing it has a little black line on it that's going back to as if there was no recolor adjustment there but if I take too much out then all I have to do is go back and flip-flop these and use my white to actually put some of the shading back in and we will do that because I doubt if I'll get it right perfectly the first time and we're going to then just keep this nice sharp edge and then we're going to because I can even soften up the shadowed edge and this might be right here and then we're going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to try and see what all would be in direct sunlight right here and then since these go down and turn under then only the sunlight would be reaching about this far down and that would be it they would stop and start casting shadows the rest of the way down and this is what we would have to do even if it was a painting so even if we were doing an illustration of this with artificial lighting we'd still have to do the same thing and plan where our shadows would be now that might go too far down but now what we might be able to do is first we're going to do a little bit of this in here too let me get real close and then we're gonna again we could go back in and touch up some of the dark areas but i don't want this all bright because the head is actually looking towards us he's kind of looking towards his right and because of that the head is not sitting right up uh, on top of the neck itself it's it's turned a little bit to the right and then I'm going to go down in here and see to where what would happen is then right where the neck starts to turn under is is where we would start to lose the direct light and know that that's where it would stop. Now I'm going to turn down the opacity and then just start lightly feathering in, pardon the pun, the shadow into what's already there just to have a soft gradation. And then we can go back in and add some if we have to. But we just need a starting point for now. And then some of these that curve out in over past the, the edge of the neck. Those would probably be in direct sunlight too. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's not looking too bad right in here. And then now we can go back in. And what I want to do is, is lighten up some of these areas just real subtle, like this cheek patch area here, and then some of these areas. And then I don't know if, if, if depending on how far over 
the head would be. Some of this might even be in direct sunlight also. Only because, again, the head is, is back towards the left side of the bird. And we'll just try a little wee bit of this. Uh, maybe and we'll turn it up. And we'll try a hard... Just like that, and we can add some back, but we'll leave it pretty strong, and we'll just blend that down in. And there's an edge right across here of where the joint of the neck is. And again, like I said, we could go back in, flop this, and go back in and, and whiten this out. And then see now we're putting shadow back in on our mask. We're putting the white back. And that's how we could really control where the shadow is going to be. And that's what's really great about masks. They really give you a creative ability to actually change things. Well, that's interesting. Uh, but now what we could do is get rid of this hard edge right away. And then take some of this more back up by down in here where it would be falling down over. And then just skimming, barely skimming across these feathers. But you could see that it's already starting to look like it's in direct sunlight compared to this one here and then what we can also do is again lighten up some of these cheek patch areas i'm going to do that right now because even some of this right in here might have a glow to it but i think right in here is definitely going to have a glow to it and that would be we'll go back let's see uh 25 i might want to take it down a little bit well we could do this Oh, I think that's too much. We're going to try and take that down a little wee bit slower at a time. And I'm going to go up here like this, but I want to make it a little bit bigger too so I don't get no streaks. And I don't have to worry about going off the edge of the illustration because we're only working just on the illustration and that's it. And I'll put a glow to right in here to make the beak look transparent. I should say translucent. And we'll do the same thing here. But now as the beak gets a little bit thicker and then more to it, I don't think it's going to be as translucent towards the heavy side but we'll give a little wee bit of glow to these and then I want to make it bigger so I could do bigger areas at a time and we'll go up here and make it about that big let me put a little glow to this area right in here Especially the eye, that'll bring it out. And the white. And then I'll leave this down in here darker because it wouldn't be reflecting as much color either. Right down in here, the underside. Just of our reflected light because there's a lot of white in here too. And then I want to soften this edge up. And 
And I could go back and even make the shadow a little bit streaky to actually match the patterns of the feathers because that's how the shadows would fall on them. And then I'm going to soften these up a little bit. And depending on, uh, this might not, this might be recessed too back in too far to actually be hit with a shadow uh, or with any sunlight. But we're going to take it down into here. Try and think of what would be on the same plane. I'm going to take it all the way up to 100%. Uh, just so I don't have to know that this is going to be all. And I can even go back in and add a little bit of shadow where I want. Because some of these here, they will definitely be cast in shadows. And that's one thing nice about masks. And we're going to do that. See, I could have left that there, but that's okay. I'll just put it back later. And then this one might be also sticking out far enough I'm gonna just take all this out just to see what we got as an overall picture yeah that's not I do like the little wee bit of the shadow here too uh, just like that and then this very well may be in sun. We could even put a little wee bit of sunlight skipping across the the parts that we think that would be sticking out the most, like this cheek patch right here, uh, and then maybe this right in here. And then let's let's do that right in here. I'm gonna take it way down. Make it bigger. And then this one right down in here too. Reflected light. And then now what we could do is go back in. I'm going to add a little wee bit of a glow to this right in here. And that, that way, again, we, we're not uh, adjusting it up here with, with the opacity on the whole entire layer. I'm controlling the whole entire layer of what I actually want to take down just a little bit of time and again we could always take down the percentage even more but then go to white and start adding it back in uh, masks are really nice to work with now if I go back to my my white and then I can even take the opacity all the way up and then I want to make a smaller brush Let's see, we're going to go way down. And I'm going to go back in and put some of this shadowed area back in, like right in here. And that might be too dark. Uh, what I'll do is then just cast a shadow. And we'll take that back out. And we're going to soften that up. We'll go back down. Out there, and I'm gonna even make it a little bit smaller. And then now we're gonna look like we are just casting individual shadows of the tips of the feathers themselves. That will really add. some detail to the shadow itself wherever we think that shadow would be hitting
It could be over the tips also. And then I'll go back to my black and take some out. Maybe even a little bit more in here. I do like that glow here. And this it looks doesn't look too bad either. And then again, we're making the uh, beak look translucent, uh, which is nice. Just like this one up here. I'll zoom in. And you can see how translucent this beak looks. And it does get more opaque over towards the back side of it. So we're correct there. And then what I'll also do is pull out, go to 100% opacity, but then a real small. And then just pull out the individual. I'll start, I'll leave some edges in the shadows. Now that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to leave some of this in the shadow of the top of the bill, but then pull out the rest. And then I could just erase all of it once I get that far. Wherever that bill would be cast in that shadow, across those little fuzzy feathers. And then I would just actually erase it all. Oh, not that part. And I'll put it back. And there's our white fuzz out in direct sunlight. And then we are going to go back up, make it smaller, go back to white, and put... Oh, Put that little wee bit back in. And then see how that looks. I do like the glow. And it does look like it's in sunlight. And then we might lighten this one up a little wee bit more. That shadow crossed here does look good. Then these are more pronounced. We could actually lighten these up too. As they would be in the sunlight also. And that I'm going to go back to 100%. And then let's see. He's a little bit too small. Right here. <laughs> now we'll just retouch up this a little wee bit. bit of reflected light down in there leave some of this dark because I think this layer right here would be overshadowing that and we could even kind of make a ragged edge there too to get really accurate and that we could do like this I would go back and we'll actually make that all direct light there so I'll go back to 100 and make this a little bit smaller and then give it a ragged edge that way that'll look 
look like those feathers are casting a shadow down on the other feathers. Change our opacity, width. Just to blend that in a little bit better. Let's take a look and see what we got. Hmm. Interesting. I like the glow here and I like the glow over here. This looks direct sunlight here, but then we could go back in and add just some hard shadows. And I think that would clean it up pretty good. Now if I go back in, I'll go back to my white. Go up a little bit, about 50. Make it nice and small. And I go back in and add some of these shadows here. Just some direct sunlight shadows. The individual feathers casting shadows on the ones below them. As it is direct sunlight and you're working with a very textured subject. Might help make it look like a sunny day. Let's see what we got here. Now these are pretty soft and fuzzy. And then what I can also do there is, is then go back to my black. And take a little wee bit away. Just to make an edge anything but straight. Let's see what we got. Okay. Well, I think I would go with that as a start point. And then again, just as you could see, uh, taking an illustration into uh, Affinity, which is just another program, um, to really expand your creativity or your creative process, uh, sometimes it really helps just to uh, give yourself another option. I always personally look at what uh, software can do and not what it can't do. If I like more options and I need... Uh, another program or two, I, I definitely uh, am all for it uh, just to give me more options and, and help my creative process as to how I could do things. Uh, so with this in mind, this is here now an actual illustration. I could go up. This is an illustration in with a photo and it looks somewhat believable. So for that reason, I would consider this piece done, but it's also creating our own artificial light source and our own, our own artificial subject that wasn't there before. So we kind of add a little wee bit more, a kind of a foreground. So now you have foreground, middle ground, and background, 
which always is a little wee bit better than just plain water going off the edge of, of the photo itself. Having those three are always great. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, until we see you again next time out in the field or at the studio, thanks for watching.